Hey guys, I'm Jake and you are watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. I am about to drop some very serious knife nerd information on you. The most important measurement on any knife, the most important specification that you can find on a knife is a specification that you will essentially never find. A measurement you will never find on any knife and that is behind the edge thickness. To make this really plain, if you were to measure the thickness of the edge behind the micro bevel, so this shiny part here is the micro bevel, if you were to measure how thick it is behind that shiny part at the top of it, which would be the shoulder of the micro bevel, that is your behind the edge thickness. So I'm doing this video because I know that so many of you guys are looking at different knife websites, you're looking at different knives, and you are comparing length and handle length and weight and steel. You're comparing all of these things. Dog just bumped the camera here. Uh, because you want to get the best knife for your money for what you want to do. So you're looking up what steel is toughest, what steel is the most corrosion resistant, what steel holds the edge the longest, and then you're looking up weight and length and you're making your decision. Now, that there's nothing wrong with that. And by the way, if you want to compare steels on paper and you're not, I don't know, a super mega ultra nerd, Go to Knife Steel Nerds. He's the only kind of reputable guy that exists who is uh, controlling variables and comparing different steels to each other. Anyways, the problem is that as you're looking at these specs for these knives, this behind the edge thickness, which I said is the absolute most important measurement on the entire knife, is not there. So really quick, um, this is a White River Knife and Tool FC7. This is a Topps Dart. And so the reason that this measurement is so important is behind the edge thickness is going to affect how well your knife is going to slice, chop, cut, essentially anything. It's also going to affect the strength of your knife. So to make this as simple as possible, a knife with an edge like this, no cut good. A knife with an edge like this, cut real good, okay? Um, a thicker edge angle, and this does not have anything to do with sharpness. It has nothing to do with sharpness. Uh, a thicker edge can be just as sharp as a thinner edge. That apex can be perfectly straight, and it can slice through paper, essentially, uh, at, w without, you know, crazy differences or an axe edge or something like that. Essentially, slice through paper exactly uh, as well. It's when you're cutting deeper or when you're cutting into wood or when you're making feather sticks or you're cutting meat, when you're doing all of these practical tasks, edge geometry is vitally important. Whereas sharpness, yeah, dull is not good, but it's, it's not part of this equation. Okay, so... The... the this this is this is kind of crazy, and the reason this is so crazy, a long time ago I did a knife comparison between like the Ontario SP10 and the Becker BK9 and probably the SE Hunglis 2, a, a whole lineup of knives. I tried controlling the variables and doing chopping tests. This is way back. And the Ontario Knife Company SP10 did absolutely disastrously terrible. There are some reasons for that. The weight distribution wasn't so good, and there are a few other reasons for that. But I believe now, knowing what I know today, the edge was too thick. And the problem with um, a company that has poor fit and finish and quality control is my edge might be too thick, and let's say I'm trying to chop through a branch. It just is performing absolutely terribly. Your edge might be a perfect balance. It might be very tough and chops through the balance kind of well. And your buddy's edge might be too thin and it chops pretty well until the knife fails. Because as you go with a thinner and thinner edge, you are more perceptible to manufacturing defects, micro fractures, and pure blunt damage. Anyways, what we have here, these two knives, these knives perform 
vastly different and let me show you why because they are of similar dimension we are going to turn this on we are going to make sure we're zeroed out here we're going to measure our behind the edge thickness here as well as we can on camera with what we have 61 thousandths that might not mean much to you yet let's measure the firecraft 7 the biggest difference dimensionally between this and the tops besides edge thickness is weight this knife is considerably lighter weight All right, 23 thousandths. Now, just, just so that to give you some context here, uh, as knives become larger, generally speaking, you want a thicker edge. This is the WorkTough V44X, an absolute monster beast chunkicus. And its edge is about 45 thousandths which I think is appropriate for this knife, but it's a little bit thick and is especially thick for a smaller knife like this to be at 60 thousandths is absolutely ridiculous. So I tested these knives side by side, chopping through maples. And even though this blade is considerably lighter weight, it outperforms this tops by a margin that is so massive. If you didn't know any better or hadn't had the two knives in your hands, you would not believe it was possible. Now, generally speaking, the downside to a thinner edge as compared to a thicker edge is toughness. Again, you have more width behind the edge, you have more strength. Also, 5160 is a much, much tougher steel than S35VN, which we have here. And yet, chopping down the maples, they both did the same task. We have a dent up there, complete chip out of the edge. 5160 should never chip, and the FC7 came out with absolutely no damage. So that is a little caveat here. That is just an example of edge thickness. Now, it's not necessarily that simple. If every knife that you purchased had the same height micro bevel, uh, then that would be a, it would be that simple. And if everyone had the same type of micro bevel, it would be that simple. However, if you look at these micro bevels, the shiny part again right here, this is really tall. And this is not, this is very, very short, this micro bevel, very, very thin right there. So let's say you have two knives with the same behind the edge thickness. We're gonna say for the sake of this video, the Diamondback Country Knives Razorback X. This is in CPM 3V. Bobby Garza is the custom maker of Diamondback Country Knives. He does just an amazing job. Like if you could feel this handle and just feel it melt into your hand, it's amazing. Uh, then here we have what I believe is the industry standard for a production knife, the SE Hunglis 2. And so I mic'd these earlier at uh, 40 thousandths of an inch, uh, miking them really quick right here. Uh, we might get a bit of a different result. Uh, all right. Uh, 41 thousandths. And here on our Diamondback Country knives razor back x right at 
41 thousandths, 41 and a half thousandths. And of course, guys, especially on camera, just trying to mic things like this, I'm going to be a few thousandths off. Undoubtedly, a few thousandths is irrelevant. But what I'm here to show you here, this, the micro bevel height can come into play here. So this micro bevel, um, this is going to be an even worse measurement. This micro bevel here, we're looking at about let's just say 77 thousandths on a micro bevel height. Whereas on the SE Hunglis, we have a bit of a shorter micro bevel. It's a little bit harder to measure since it's been stripped and used so much and likely is convexed from sharpening. But I would say we have about a 56 thousandths high micro bevel. So if, if this Razorback X is the same thickness up here behind this higher micro bevel than this SE Hunglis 2 is, then it is going to have a um, perceived thinner behind the edge thickness because it is thick, it is the same thickness but up higher, meaning the angle is more acute coming down. Uh, there are other possible differences. Convexing away the shoulders can affect, can make an edge feel like it's thinner than it actually is. There are other things that can be involved here. But guys, um, this is just to say, this is a quick video, or it's, it was supposed to be. These, these micro bevels, the behind the edge thickness, is an absolutely incredibly important... Um, metric by which these knives should be compared to each other and it's the metric that we just absolutely uh, do not have. I think one of the only knives that I have that advertises its behind the edge thickness is the Phobos Tier 1 BC that I got which I believe if memory serves advertised a behind the edge thickness of 20 thou. Um, I could be off on that. Uh, I will start advertising my own behind the edge thickness with Exodus Knife and Tool. I talked to the guys about that, and that is a piece of information that I want to include. But if you are shopping for a knife, if you are comparing, start asking about behind the edge thickness. The more people who have a general idea of this concept, the more people that are asking about this concept, the more people that are learning about this concept, the better that the industry will get. And again, this is uh, maybe overgeneralized, but your more acute behind the edge thickness, your more acute edge angle is going to slice better, but be weaker. Your more obtuse edge angle is going to slice worse. It creates more friction but it is tougher. So there is no single perfect behind the edge thickness, just like there's no single perfect size, there's no single perfect weight, there's no single per perfect weight distribution. In my opinion, if you get someone that picks up a random knife and they put it on their finger like this, this is the SE Jiraka, I measured the edge angle on Instagram on this as well. They put it on their finger like this and they're like, it's very well balanced. Yes, this is a perfectly balanced knife. Perfectly balanced for what? Every use for a knife requires a different balance. Every size. So the things that affect your behind the edge thickness and whether or not that thickness is appropriate for the knife is how the knife is going to be used. What steel and heat treat the knife has, the size of the knife, the weight of the knife, all of these things are important. There's the only reason for a little pocket knife like my Exodus Knife and Tool Jackalope here to have an edge as thick 
as a wander tactical smilodon like this monster of a thing is if i was going to use this knife for hammering it into wood and splitting wood out or something like that like it would be so impractical feeling because by the way the this wander tactical smilodon uh we still have some of my blood on it on the logo i think there this knife I miked at like uh, 34 thousandths of an inch, which is very impressive for a knife of this size and tells me why it performs so well. So we're looking at uh, my jackalope here is about 20 thousandths. The Wander Tactical is about 34 thousandths. Well, it may take more force for me to cut into something with this Wander Tactical but that's not a problem because all of this extra handle and all of this extra blade gives me more leverage. So I don't necessarily even feel that I'm using more force depending on the task. Um, the edge is well matched to the knife and its intended use and its size. If this knife had a behind the edge thickness of 34 thousandths and I wanted to cut anything, I'd probably have to use... 50% more force and cut a normal thing I'd have to sit here and put my shoulders into it because I have a normal size handle and a lot less leverage so guys uh, you know all things are important this isn't super simple I'm not here to tell you that thinner is better I will tell you that I believe for the most part uh, where production companies are not going to push the limits too much on edge thickness because it does increase the potential uh, as you thin the edge for more warranty and uh, more problems like that. Um, and custom makers will push those boundaries a little bit harder. Uh, there is no perfect edge thickness. Um, it just... There is an appropriate edge thickness for the variables at hand. I will also say that as a production knife company, I think that for the most part, White River Knife and Tool does the thinnest edges. I think it's because they have the best heat treat. They have less concern about uh, poor quality control, microfractures, problems from their heat treat, from their manufacturing process, so they feel confident with going with a thinner edge than other companies do. Because here's the other thing. As a production company, if you're grinding a lot of knives, if you're grinding them hot, you can ruin your edge, you can ruin your heat treat. If <clears throat> you can grind them off to one side or the other, which can ruin your heat treat, you can warp them. You can have all of this stuff go on that's going to ruin the knife if you go with a th and with a thinner edge all of these things will be immediately perceptible and will make the knife immediately break if you're not confident in your ability to make a good knife just make the edge thicker because it's going to take less time grinding it it's going to take less skill grinding it you're removing less material you're going through less belts and if you do have problems it's still probably going to be tough enough to hide those problems at least for a long time and at least for normal use most people don't use most of their knives even for mo normal use most people put their knives in a shelf let alone do they find themselves in an environment where they use a knife where it would be considered extreme use that's why i use knives pretty hard on this channel because it, you could use a knife with normal use for a lifetime but you find yourself in a bit of a pickle and you've got to use the knife in a way that you don't normally do that it might not have been intended for and it could break not because the design of the knife was not capable of handling the use but because there was a quality there was a defect in the knife that you had not yet found so when do you find your defect oh in a survival situation when you needed the knife the most now you found that it's defective and guess what the warranty doesn't matter anymore because you are in the situation so that's why i test knives a lot harder than most people do i hope this was educational um, check out the description box below if you want to support this channel and my knife brand exodus knife and tool the link will be down there made in the usa of course uh and let me know what you think in the comment section if this if you think that this video could help a friend shoot it over to them 
I greatly appreciate it. I hope that you have a blessed evening. I think I will go back and do this video edited uh, and add more B-roll to the footage. Uh, you know, make everything better for those with short attention spans. Uh, but uh, I just, I was looking at these knives. I was looking at that Instagram post that I did today where I posted my findings of behind the edge thickness. And I thought, you know what? The wife and kids are gone. I'm just going to bang this out really quick as a YouTube video. There you go. Uh, again, I'll talk to you in the comment section below, and I hope that you have a blessed day.